Kaohsiung, the largest city in southern Taiwan, is a thriving metropolis. It's a vibrant place to live and is only getting greener and more livable with each passing year. But did you know that if you leave the city, there's even more wonders to discover? Such as, yes, believe it or not, mud volcanoes. Let's go on a little adventure today, shall we? Please join me and welcome back. Good afternoon, everybody. Wes Davis here. I'm up here in Kaohsiung County. This is a little district called Yanchan that I've never actually been to before, which is a little bit surprising because I thought that I'd been everywhere in Kaohsiung. But today the idea was to go up to a geological park called Mud World. This is a very famous geological area in Kaohsiung. But as we were driving, just happened to notice a sign that said Mudstone Badland Geopark Kaohsiung. And I looked it up on Google and there are pictures of a literal mud volcano. So a very small mound of mud with like water and bubbles popping out the top. So the reviews seemed positive and I wanted to just take a little detour today, check it out for myself and see what this mud volcano is all about. So if we just take this secret little path that I can see right behind me, past the curious locals, we're going to end up at the mud volcano. After that, if we don't run out of gas, because I realize the tank is very low, we will be at Mud World. So this is a muddy, fun video for you guys today. Hope you will join me and let's keep on driving down that path. Let's go. So this place was a little hard to get to. As always, I will put the information right down in the description box. Okay, so we just made it to the Mud Volcano Information Center. I didn't know that there would be one of these. So apparently this is a little bit of a tourist location here in Kaohsiung. There's a worker here who is very friendly. He explained to us that the Mud Volcano actually recently exploded. So I don't know if that's lucky for us or not lucky for us, but maybe a good thing that it didn't explode while we were exploring it. So let's go see what this thing is all about. I'm so curious. So here we are, we found the first signs of our geological activity, standing beside, I guess, a mud pool, and you can hear it bubbling away. You can see all the water bubbles coming up and dispersing all the water and the mud. Something tells me you would not want to fall in that pit. Okay, so it looks like maybe this is the previous mud volcano. So obviously, much like a real volcano, over thousands of years, it would have just brought the mud up from the center of the earth and created very unique structures like this. And then over here, I believe that this is probably the one that recently exploded. So you can almost see something that looks like lava lines coming down the side of the mountain. That's really quite interesting. So as we all know, Taiwan is quite a geologically active area. There's mountain ranges, hot springs, earthquakes, and now I suppose there are mud volcanoes. Just another interesting thing to add to the list of things that we can do and see here in Taiwan. Okay, well, not much to see here, but still kind of interesting. I've never really seen a mud volcano like that before. And luckily it's only about a 30 second walk from where you park your scooter. Yeah, let's just keep going to Moon World. Okay, finally, welcome to Moon World, officially. So I just read a sign and it said that this area of Taiwan, the southwestern corner, is full of these kind of bad lands. So you can see all around me, this whole area is just pockmarked with, I would call them something like mini mud mountains. And quite similar looking actually to the mud mountain we saw this afternoon. And then we drove another 30, 40 minutes to get here. And from what I understand, the research I've done says that this whole area used to be just a basin for landslides coming down from the central mountain range. And you know, the water will wash away all kinds of mud and debris and dust from those mountains. And then all of that sediment piled up in this region of Taiwan. And then of course, over the next several thousand or tens of thousands of years, the typhoons came, the rains came, the winds came, and eventually just eroded away at all of these little mud areas. And now of course, we're left with all these spectacular looking formations, geological formations in the earth. And it's actually quite striking because I'm actually walking on fairly flat, hard packed ground. And then just out of nowhere, these mountains will jut up into the sky. And it's all very, very striking. And this kind of landscape is something that you would never really find in Taiwan outside of these badlands areas. Even in Canada, I would say where I'm from, 
which is very far away from any mountains. It's all just rolling hills, grassy fields, and forests. So I'm just not used to seeing any kind of landscape that looks like this. It's, it's rather spectacular looking. And then I'm about to show you something really cool because the Taiwan government, you know, they're always trying to improve things, make things more accessible and interesting for tourists. So look what they've done to this area of the Moon Valley here. So look at that, that's absolutely gorgeous. They've got all of these colored spotlights set up, just pointing directly at the mountain face. And because of the different colors, the greens, blues, and reds, and then the shadows it casts on the mountain, it gives it a very otherworldly, or I might even say alien planet look to it. I mean, where else are you gonna find something like this? I, I actually, I've come here once during the day, I didn't film, but I didn't come here at night. I had no idea that they put this kind of care and effort into making this place look very, very unique and I would say spectacular. So you're not actually allowed to touch the actual mud part of the mountain, but my girlfriend Evan and I, we just discovered something really interesting. You can make all these sort of beautiful and artistic shadows, I would say. And it's, we've just been kind of playing around with this quite a bit. It's, it's really cool. I've never quite seen anything like it. As I mentioned before, it does remind me of a, like an art exhibit in a way. I can imagine if you were, if you were a good dancer, this could be something you could do for TikTok or something like that. That's really neat. <laughs> I really want to touch it, but of course you're not allowed to and I'm going to respect that. But it looks to me like very hard packed, almost dusty clay, something like that. Just the kind of thing that we did see at that mud volcano today. So I'm sure that's all part of the same process. And it's probably also likely that some of this mud has come from underneath the ground that bubbled up towards the surface. And then as the land starts overturning itself, you know, geological processes, it will just naturally bring mud into this area as well as the mud that falls down from the tops of the mountains. This is so cool. I already mentioned this, but it almost feels like I'm walking on kind of a ghostly alien planet and really weird how you can see the shadows everywhere from all those spotlights. This is, this is so cool. Never seen anything like this before. Wow. Very, very interesting. So that's about it. I thought we were gonna do a little bit more hiking in the area. There is actually a lot here that you can do. There's a lake up top, which I saw with my drone, and there are lots more little mountainous hills like this but the sun goes down super quickly. Right now it's December. So I think we're gonna head out, maybe try to find some dinner in the area, hopefully something local. But as far as my expectations go today, this is much more impressive than the first time I came. I came on a very hot and sunny day and I had no idea that all these beautiful lights come on at night. So my advice to you would actually probably be come in the evening and then stick around long enough to be able to see all of these spotlights activate because this is really one of the most beautiful things I've seen in a very, very long time in Taiwan. I really, really love this place. It is a, it's a hidden gem, I would say, here in Kaohsiung. Lastly, we decided to head south to Gansan and try the locally famous lamb hot pot, making sure to stop at a very pretty traditional pagoda along the way. The hot pot itself was quite good with a large variety of ingredients to add. However, for me, the clear winner were the barbecued lamb ribs. I didn't even know those were an option in Taiwan and they are certainly worth making the trip for. Anyway, that is the video. Thank you so much. And I do apologize for my long absence, but it was kind of a busy Christmas and New Year. But as always, I will catch you guys in the next one. Please subscribe and take care, everybody. Goodbye.